Hello and welcome to this episode of In The Bunch, the world's fastest moving cycling magazine show and understanding the talk of the town at the moment, the world's biggest annual sporting event, the Tour de France. Almost saw the defending champion seeking a fifth victory in this race, Chris Froome not starting. That's after the organizer declared him as unwelcome. A decision soon rescinded by the UCI, the world cycling body, in conjunction with WADA, the anti-doping agency. But was it a good call? Was it not? Spoke to Ross Tucker, a renowned sports scientist, and got his thoughts on this one in which he feels it certainly hasn't left the sport or the UCI or WADA in great esteem afterwards. The, the decision does damage to the credibility of anti-doping, but the silence after the decision and the refusal to publish information and to tell people how it was reached and what were the factors and what was considered and why did Froome not have to do the test that, that's the stuff that really damages sport, in my opinion. Well, we agree with Ross Tucker. It's a question of transparency one way or the other. When you look at the tests with salbutamol, 41 athletes have tested positive, 21 were convicted. In the world of cycling, four positive tests, three convictions, and one acquittal. Is that one Chris Froome or isn't it? Hmm. Anyway, good news story for South Africa's dimension data for Quebec professional Jay Thompson, making his debut this year in the Tour de France to tick all three boxes of the three big grand tours now for Jay. Of course, comes from a fantastic cycling family. The Thompsons, dad Michael, a springbuck, multiple national champion, helped Yanni van der Berg to win the report tour way, way back in 1980. Of course, brother Michael Thompson has an interesting story as well. Track international, and then he went to pilot Gavin Kilpatrick's tandem in the Paralympics at Beijing. Never ever forget that crash in the final against the Australians when they crashed under the judges' table on that in the final sprint. Wonderful effort there to still get the bronze medal at Beijing. So, Jay Thompson, imagine being selected just 10 days before the actual start of the Tour de France. These teams have squads of 30 riders that all have to hone themselves. Maybe 10, 15 riders think they'll be in to make the final eight. They all have to go through all the motions. Thompson getting the nod maybe just a week before, and he's really keen to have a great tour. When the process starts, it's, it's normally 14 or 15 guys that they put on the list. Um, I was never on that list. After the classics, the team kind of said, okay, well, it's been good. Start thinking about maybe you know, July. After we did the Adridica Conica race, yeah, that Wednesday we got a call to say, okay, this is the team. His team leader, though, Louis Menke, is ending up, maybe not by choice, but out of circumstance, riding the Tour of Austria. A clashing tour with the Tour de France. He's probably just a little bit overcooked from too many grand tours of recent. After being excluded from the world of international sport at the 1960 Olympics, we wanted readmission. We got that. We wanted a ride in the Tour de France. We got that. We wanted a stage winner in the Tour de France. We got that. We wanted a Grand Tour foot on the podium. Now we've got that. We're always looking for one of the men's cyclists to do it, but in fact, the Giro Rosa of 2018 saw Ashley Mormon Passio, the national women's road race champion, do just that. A fantastic second position. Four minutes adrift on Annemiek van Vleet and the Dutch girl, but a wonderful ride from our own Ashley on that occasion. There's all this talk often, obviously, about men's cycling. and The spotlight is always on men's cycling. And, you know, even Doug, for example, was talking about um, Team Dimension Data aiming for the first African to podium at a Grand Tour in 2020. And then, you know, sometimes it, it does make me feel a little bit sad that people don't notice that actually it's possible for me to achieve that as a woman, but I'm still African, you know, um, and, it, and the Giro Rosa is still a grand tour, you know, for us. It's 10 days long and um, it's the most demanding tour on the calendar, so it's our grand tour. And if that wasn't enough, Ashley followed up that tremendous display in the Giro Rosa with a third place in La Corse, which is a single-day event presented on the Tour de France. Wonderful. Great stuff. But keeping the South African flag flying, we went across to Ireland. And of course, the junior Tour of Ireland overall victory went to Ricardo Broxham, the pro-touch rider, 18 years old on the 11th of August. In fact, shares his birthday with Phil Liggett. The trivia for you there. Not quite the same age, though, as Uncle Phil. But a fantastic ride from South Africa's young clown. His mother says they call him the dung beetle because wherever he goes, he just creates havoc. Anyway, it's a fantastically talented guy. He was a cricketer, athlete, and did his matric unbelievably in three months. 
so that he could focus his attentions on cycling. He's at the moment in Eagle at the World Cycle Excellence Center where he's preparing for the World Track Champs. Wish Ricardo a wonderful medal or two there. Campaigning in Maniago, Italy, en route to the World Championships, there is Goldie Fuchs, 26-year-old South African paracyclist. In fact, a man in 2016 winning the World Cup Series in the T2 class. He's got five medals at world level and tragically is traveling at his own expense. The most ridiculous part of that whole campaign, in fact, the appeals on social media for accommodation and meals for Goldie Fuchs. How? Can anybody expect any athlete to perform at his very best when he doesn't know where his next meal is coming from? It's completely ridiculous. We spoke to Esther Tatazi, the uh, acting president of Cycling South Africa, after William Newman walked out in February this year. And Easter was quite adamant that the Federation needs to go along the transformation route, which is a very good cause, and that certainly has to happen. But they must have more than just one fish to fry, and certainly the fiscal fish here seems to be the one most needed to sort out at the moment. Tatazi feels that we need to appeal to corporate South Africa to support both Sascock and Cycling South Africa. Wonderful cause, and that would be a normal expectation. But what is the return on investment? What can we give them for supporting our sport? And now for some breaking news on the world's fastest moving cycling magazine show. Cycling South Africa agreeing that the use of disc brakes is now legal in all forms of cycling, inclusive of BMX, of mountain bike, of downhill bikes, and of course track bikes. Hmm. Maybe we're disc pulling your brakes on the last one. Disregard that part. But we're eager to establish the whereabouts of this person. Last seen leading the Neisner Oyster Festival mountain bike race. That was until the 15 kilometer marker when she completely went off the map and slipped right out of the results right to the end of the event. Leaving Robin de Groot, the South African mountain bike champion, to beat Candice Lill into second wheel. Gert Haynes was the men's winner of the marathon on the mountain bike side. Well, in the road race, the honours there went to Chris Joester and Henriette Schumann winning that Oyster Festival road version for the many, many at the time. Good news there, Amy McDougall in fact was found not on the result sheet of the Oyster Festival but at the finish, so all's good that ends well. The winners though, the men's and women's competitions at that event, went on to win the National Marathon Championships. Gert Haynes a maiden victor, but Robin de Groot now six times the best women's marathon mountain biker in the country. The action then went across eastbound to the Jock Classic, the 37th renewal of effectively South Africa's second oldest bike race after the Cape Town Cycle Tour. Big victory there for David Marais by one second over a past winner, Dylan Girdleston. The women's national champion, Carla Uber also winning the women's version of this big event. They were also after five big wins in 2018, went a wee bit off the boil towards the Easter time and now is back on top with a fantastic victory in that event. 600 riders made their way down largely from Gauteng to this event using all sorts of portaging devices. Are you the kind of a rider that puts your bike in the car at the expense of family members? Do you put it on the boot rack, on the roof rack, on a trailer or maybe on a bike rack system? Our producer Kutsia Ghost recently introduced his fine German SUV to the Westvalia bike rack system and his findings in fact can be found on our In The Bunch website. Not towing the line at all, the person who put up a neck high wire in the Glen on one of Cape Town's most popular mountain bike routes, almost decapitating the rider through that crazy stupid act that was performed. Was this done out of sabotage? Maybe other users of the Glen who don't want cyclists there. Was it robbery that precipitated a move like this? What is the malice? What form of malice would, be, would bring about an act as stupid as this? Now getting just about to the wire. In this week's show, a fantastic story about Vimpy Sanders. The race of a thousand miler, it was 1500 kilometers all the way from up north down to the fairest cape of them all, took this rider five days, seven hours and 18 minutes with little bits of sleep in between that period, of course, just to try and rejuvenate. Now one of the Vimpies saw a burning bush somewhere in the crew, not only Moses did that, but on closer examination he went and looked at was fireflies in a bush. Wonderful sight for him. He got so tired that he even saw a shooting star, which he ducked for, believe that or not. 
Well, from shooting stars in the middle of the career to what's starring on in the bunch.co.za in the bronze medal position, the South African National Marathon Mountain Bike Championship. In the silver slot, though, not a story on this week's show, but huge on the website. Kevin Evans beating his addiction to become a new Kevin Evans. Understandably, right atop the podium, Chris Froome just about not in the Tour de France to defend his title. If you've enjoyed the show as much as what we've done doing it for you, don't forget to subscribe to the show and to tap the bell never to miss another episode. Johnny Kun, on behalf of Kutsia host the entire In The Bunch team saying, I'm off now to read the review on those bike racks before I make a beeline. But until then, it's ciao ciao.